Yes, my peoples, it's T, and I'm back today with The Apprentice episode 10 reaction and review. We're getting very close to the end now, but without further ado, let's get it. Okay, so this week is an 18th, well, the start of an 18th century villa in West London, um, in Chiswick. Um, and because this used to be called Cheeswick back in the day, um, this is this task is all about creating a cheese and no ordinary cheese, a vegan cheese. So there's apparently there's 88 million estimated vegan vegans worldwide. Interesting. Um, so the task was to create an alternative vegan cheese um, and then present this and pitch this to two major retailers. So this could be interesting indeed. So let's get straight into it. Let's get straight into it. So. Boom, straight away, Alan Sugar mixed the teams up straight away again. I say mixed up, but he moved Trey onto Nexus. Um, and we, I think after that move, it made me think this is a tough one to call because now the ever team is smaller and with only three people, um, I think, I don't know. I feel like a smaller team, as I said last week, typically performs better in, in most scenarios, but maybe a bit tough. But the thing is for me that this team is now smaller with three people and they have, um, I'm talking about Team Supreme, by the way, and they have Felucia, um, who, in my opinion, I'm not convinced on yet. So it's almost like a two and a half team with Rachel and um, and Steve. Um, so seem, Team Supreme may actually go back to losing after they had their first win last week. My prediction is that they're going to go back to losing again just because they have three people and one of the people I'm not convinced on. Um, the other team has, and, and the other team has three decent people. They have Flo, who's been pretty consistently decent. They have Trey, who's been pretty consistently decent. And, have, and they have Paul, who's been pretty consistently decent. And they have Phil as PM. Now, obviously, Phil is the poor one there and Phil could bring them down, as I say, every week. Um, so, again... Yeah, it's it's a tough one to call. So, onto the task. Phil decided as PM, as he was told he had to be PM this week. Um, he said he wants to do gourmet cheese spread. Um, and he wants to be high quality, restaurant quality. And everybody agreed with him, which is a good start for Phil so far. And Rachel went down the soft cheese route. Um, she wanted something exotic, something to stand out. Um, Felicia did say that she would prefer if they could go something more safer, more classic. Um, and But Steve agreed with Rachel <coughs> in the end um, and decided to take the risk with Exotic. Now, in my opinion, this could come back to bite them um, if they don't do it right. Because honestly, again, I've watched Apprentice for so many years now. When you try and take a risk and do something different, it unless you do it really well, which is very rare, it doesn't work out. It doesn't work out. Um, so for me, Team Supreme is already not looking good so far. The retailers are creatures of habit. They will typically just buy something that they're used to seeing already on the shelves. It all comes down to marketing. So it's not looking good. Um, in my opinion, it's all going to come down to taste and marketing, which is essentially the whole task. So good branding, good marketing, and a great taste. That's all that's going to matter in this, in this task. So yeah, it's going to be interesting. And the other team now, we have Trey as a sub-team leader with Flo. I think that them two, they're a strong team. They should pull something out of the bag, in my opinion. But we'll see. Um, and then on the other team, Felucia is on her own on the branding team. Honestly, they're done for. <laughs> they're done for. Felucia on her own. Branding. Has it not seen the previous test? They're done for. Unless she somehow pulls something magically out of the bag, this team is finished. She's got everything She's got everything on her. She's got the she's got the the name, the brand, the logo, the video, the whole essentially almost the whole product is on her, on her own. And I don't have any faith in her abilities based on her previous performances in the previous weeks. So yeah, Team Supreme, honestly, if they surprise me, I'll be I'll be happy. But I'll whoa, sh yeah. And then on the other team, Phil and Paul chose Truffle. Now, this was an interesting choice for me because. That's like Marmite, you either love it or you hate it. Like, it's one or the other. So choosing truffle as your main ingredient 
you might alienate some of your potential customers there. So yeah, the both teams are trying hard to, to, to fail this task. That's all I'm going to say. But flip over to the other team, Steve and Rachel. Again, just to actually caveat, again, I don't have clips this week. I have one clip this week. But other than that, I do not have clips because I don't have time. Um, but flip to the other team, Steve and Rachel, they decided to make curry cheese. That sounds absolutely disgusting. Curry cheese. Again, honestly, honestly, they're done. Curry cheese. Unless, I, I don't know, unless it's something I don't know. It's ridiculous. I've never heard of it in my life. And yes, you can be innovative and you know create new things. But wow, curry cheese. Curry. Anyway, let's not even get to this. Let's not get to this. <laughs> and then they flicked. I should I should have got a clip of this to be fair. But they flicked to Felucia. Um trying to decide on the branding name and the name and everything. And honestly, she was drawing a blank with the branding. Um, she's on her own, I guess. Um, so Felucia might be going home today because she's not, She it's not a great start to this task so far. On Trey's side now, the name Scrumptious Spreads for me is way too basic. The logo, basic. The jars don't make sense. Why is there jars? It looks like, it looks like, a, it looks like, um, like, you know, when you, you have a cremation, and you just, yeah, you, you put the, the ashes in the jar. I don't get it. Um, but let's see what what they end up feeling in the end. And then Phil and Paul, I do not trust them with their quantities. The way how they was measuring and tasting the ingredients. It's like like a thing in the air situation. Don't trust that. Um, but yeah, based on, based on so far the branding and the ingredients, right now I cannot call. I can't, I can't call it. I can't tell who's the stronger team. Or has a stronger product at all. So both teams for me are just not looking too good. Um, <laughs> yo, listen, Flo is so posh. She's so posh. When Trey was trying to teach her how to rap, I say rap, just say some lyrics. Not even rap, just say some lyrics. It, it was just so posh. It's, it's, it's incredible. But um, Trey has experience writing lyrics. So he, the video should go well in terms of being catchy and stuff. But let's see where that goes as well. And to be fair, flip back, it did flip back to Felucia at some point. And, you know, she's on her own. She's trying. She, I think she's trying. She's trying. It's not great, but it's also not bad at the same time. She is under a lot of pressure. Um, can she can she cope under pressure or will she fumble? Um, and when the branding teams came back now t together um, to reveal what they decided, Paul, as usual, called out all of the relevant points of the brand. He called out all of the, the, the flaws. And he's like, you know what? There's no mention of vegan on the brand. There's no standout branding at all. Um, and all of this, he mentioned all of this stuff, which is such a relevant point to call out because I think Port, I think Trey and Flo, sorry, were quite poor on the branding there. I don't know what they was thinking. I expected better from them, if I'm being honest. And on the other team, the branding went down a little bit better. Um, but as expected, the flavor was an acquired taste. The flavor was not, it was not flavoring, essentially. Um... And then Everton, the taste, you know, the taste, it doesn't have a strong truffle taste, but that's what is on the branding. So it might be a blessing in disguise. I don't know. Time will tell. Um, and then the video from Felucia. Whew, wow. It wasn't great. It wasn't great, but she was on her own. So it was kind of difficult. But all the points that Rachel made about the video not being, um, not really showing the brand. It's a good point. Like, I don't understand what goes through people's minds. I don't understand. I don't understand, like... When you come on Apprentice, or even just even your normal day job, like there's certain things that should be literally permanently inked into your brain when you're doing any task, like branding, marketing, product name, all this stuff should be there. How can you create a video without even mentioning the brand or mentioning nothing about the product? That's basic. It's an advertisement. Basic. Every year they make the same mistakes. I don't get it. Um, but yeah, anyway. Um, so in the end... Um, Phil um, asked Trey to to join him in the pitch, which would definitely help because Trey's pretty typically good at pitching. Um, but yeah, I still can't call it. I still cannot call it. Um, Trey's team, or say Phil's team, had a slightly better video, but again, Paul making valid points about it being very dull, very very dull. Um, it's a yeah dull video. I couldn't make that video on my phone in five seconds, but they paid the company to make that mad. Anyway, first one. Onto the pitches, um, Paul started the, sorry, Phil started the pitch to Whole Foods. Um, Phil flopped the pitch. Absolute crumbelina. That's it, I told you, this is his name. His name is Crumbelina. It just keeps crumbling um, like his apple pies that he makes. It's just, <laughs> it's ridiculous. 
Um, yeah, poor. And then Trey got asked a question which he didn't answer. The retailer asked him a very clear question and he just went off into a tangent and said some other stuff. Um, and then it also mentioned that they can't even taste the truffle, which is why it's on the packaging. So yeah, it's not a great start from that from that from that team at all. And on to Felucia, Rachel, and Steve. Big softy. The pitch started pretty well, I think. Um, Felucia and Rachel done well, I think initially, but then obviously the retailers again made a very good point about the flavor not being on the front of the of the of the packaging and the video being very poor. Um, yeah, honestly, yeah, not sure about that, but. Honestly, overall, both teams didn't have great feedback. In my opinion, the curry one might be harder to sell, to be honest, because it's curry cheese. Again, who wants cheese and curry mixed in one? It just doesn't even sound right. It sounds like a vomit waiting to happen. Um, the truffle cheese got okay feedback. Um, but actually, on a side point, what DF is truffle? What is truffle? Like, what? I actually don't know what it is. I should look into it. I don't know what it is. But, um, but yeah, poor, poor, poor. Anyway, now on to Tesco. Big retailer here, um, the biggest in the UK. Um, stores all around the world. And again, Phil isn't great at pitching. Fumbolina once again. Um, and Flo, to be fair, I expect it better from Flo. Flo crumbled as well. Um, and Tesco absolutely ripped them to shreds. Every question was ripping them to absolute smithereens. Smithereens, shreds. Um, the other team, Steve, cr hey, Crumbolina part two. I didn't, I didn't think Steve would flop like that, but wow. Yeah, man. Listen, serve serve Steve's right for lying about. We got extremely good feedback. No, you didn't. <laughs> and he crumbled after that. I and mean, the truth, the truth held him back. <laughs> um, anyway, honestly, I think based off the pitch and the feedback, Team Supreme may may have just about lo lost this one, and not because the other team is good, but only because, as I mentioned earlier, Rachel risked it with the curry flavor. And I think the flavor is what, what this will come down to. So I think Phil has luckily escaped again and potentially got his first win. Um, but let's see what the boardroom says. Now onto the boardroom, onto the boardroom. I have a clip here that I want to play from the boardroom because this clip absolutely cracked me up. I was in, I was in stitches it, and it's probably not even that funny, but I was in stitches. So I'm going to play this, this clip because I think it, I think it's, I think it's a laugh. I think it's an absolute laugh. Um, so let me play this. Name you came up with. So the name is Big Softy. Um, Named after me, then. Yeah. <laughs> First person that came to mind, obviously. Did you come up with some names, Steve? Didn't you? you came up with Chigan V. Chigan V's. Chigan V's. So was we just by moving the C and the V's and yeah. trying to come I'll up with... I'll tell you what I think that suggestion was tucking Ferrable. Tucking Ferrable, that's what that is. Honestly... <laughs> Honestly, listen, listen, Alan Sugar is quick with it, man. Honestly, that was talking variable for real. Like, what kind of, what kind of, what kind of, what kind of, wow, Chigan V's, you know, that was talking variable for real. Wow. I was, yeah, I was, I was in stitches. That was hilarious. <laughs> anyway, onto the results, onto the results. And as expected, zero orders for Team Supreme. The curry flavored thing was the thing that brought them down. What a flop ski. Phil got his win, which honestly wasn't nothing to do with Phil at all. Um, at all. So he's very lucky that the other team just chose a really poor selection because the other team actually had a slightly better brand, in my opinion. Um, but the flavor is, is the key thing. It's the product and it's the product itself. So, yeah. Um, who, who should go home? <sighs> maybe, maybe Rachel. Because she's PM, but maybe Felucia, but at the same time, it's it's tough because if you think, oh, it's tough. So, you know what? And the boardroom itself was quite amicable. It was quite an amicable boardroom, to be fair. Steve was very humble and everyone made some very, very, very good points to save themselves. Um, so it's a tough call. It's a tough one to call, but if you're basing it off the entire process, it should be Felucia um, and not Rachel, even though she was a PM in this house because overall she's been quite decent as a candidate this, this season. So, Onto the results, and the results are Felucia. So Felucia was sent home. She was sent packing quick time. Alan Sugar didn't mess about. She was sent home packing quick time. See ya. Um, and to be fair, it's fair. She's been she's not been great in the whole entire process. And this process today, she was on her own. A very bit a bit unlucky. I think Rachel made a poor decision to leave all the, the entire branding to just one person. Very, very poor decision from Rachel. But unfortunately, um, yeah, Felucia as a as a whole deserve to go. And then boom, guess what? 
Guess what? Guess what? There was another double firing this week. And guess who went home? It was Steve. Now, this one for me, I think I, I think it's a bit unlucky. I think Steve's a bit unlucky. Honestly, both Steve and Rachel were very close to going home. And they was both begging hard to stay. Begging it. Begging it. Especially Steve. And I can see how much it meant to him. Look, like he was about to cry. I can see how much he really meant to him. He said, yo, if I don't get this investment, I'm done. There's nothing. I have nothing to go back to. I'm done. Um, I feel bad to him because... I don't think he'd done much wrong, to be honest, but his business idea clearly wasn't for Alan Sugar or something because he just got sent packing as well. So, yeah, interesting there. And it also, it's kind of obvious that it was going to be, well, to me anyway, it's kind of obvious that it was going to be a double firing because the um, we know the next episode is the interviews and that's normally a final five. I, I don't think I've seen a final six before, so it's always, it was always going to be a final five. Um, so I'm looking forward to the interviews because this part is usually the brutal and typically, for me, the best part of the show. So I'm looking forward. I'm very intrigued to see what everybody's business ideas are and seeing who has good business acumen, who doesn't, who has their numbers correct, all of this stuff. So, because every year, every year, despite watching The Apprentice and knowing how brutal it is and knowing how much they go in and check your background and stuff, people still come unprepared. So I'm looking forward to seeing who is going to be on point and who isn't. So, yeah, that was my Apprentice review reaction this week there's no prediction because i don't i just can't call it i just don't know who's going to be on point you just never know with this one so listen week 11 coming up i'm looking forward to seeing what the interviews are saying if you like this video like comment subscribe and all of that jazz peace <laughs>